Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone, I am here at my favorite art supply store. It's Kensington Art Supply. Uh, for starters, this is not a sponsored video. Um, Kensington Art Supply was just kind enough to allow me to film my shopping spree. Um, so I'm working on Divinica issue 5. It's published by Rothick and I'm doing all the interior art and I'm going to be watercoloring slash mixed media ing up the uh, the entire book. I'm out of watercolors so I have my list that JP Roth and I uh, decided to get so I've got all the Schmincke numbers that I want to buy and then a few other things and then Ikea stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to be uh, trying to get all the things that I need for the drawing and the coloring part right now so come join me in the store. This is my favorite art supply store. I've been to art supply stores all over the place, um, but still this is the one I love the most. And so you can come in and join me. Over there's all the Copic markers and stuff. So I'm usually over there. There's colored pencil over there too, which is awesome. So we might go there afterwards, but for now we're gonna go over to the watercolor area. Everyone, this is Annette. She's the owner of this amazing art store. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. And she was kind enough to let me do this video for you guys. All right. So this is all of the Aquarelles. So they are the Schmincke brand um, watercolor things. And I bought myself a palette. So I have an empty palette that I need to fill so fancy. I love this one. So this I, I'm bringing in with me to the store today. And so it's got, I already have one. <laughs> Yay me. So I've got a bunch of other little slots that I can fill and I've chosen the colors because the, there's a specific palette that I'm going to be working with. So I'm just going to be looking for all the colors here, but I need to get a shopping bag, which I forgot, or a cart. So we're going to go over to get a cart. Here we go. And if any of you guys have any questions, you can go ahead and shoot them out. Dan will read them to me. So, there we go. Just gonna put this away. Ooh, are there any? They do, they have a, they have a color book. So this is explaining all the colors and Oh, hey, Kara. Hey, Juan. So this is all the colors that they have. Oh my goodness, this is so pretty. Okay, so this is more than what I saw. Hmm, I shall have to ask if I can have one of these. Anyway, let's get going. So I uh, saved it by number and the numbers actually are not, well here they're actually done in by number. On the palette that I was looking at, or the swatch book, <laughs> you guys can see it because I posted it a few hours ago. It actually, um, it wasn't by number. So this is gonna make life easier for me. So 223, 223, in the bag, kitchen. All right, 220, 220, 350. 55 so they have something of everything here it's amazing 356 353 368 368 so the sky in the in the world that we're doing for Divinica issue 5 is going to be all these amazing shades of pink and purple my scanner hates purple so that's going to be exciting but it's going to be really fun the originals are going to be so pretty so this is number 368 everyone seems to think you should just buy it all keep it <laughs> 
to keep it simple. Are you feeling like paying for it for me? <laughs> I think Dan is a little nervous right now. Rightly so. I am going hog wild in an art store. <laughs> well, someone else here is just saying her husband uh, is hating you now because she's on her way to Kensington now too. To, oh, seriously? Yeah, Nicole, I think somebody. Nicole so. is coming to Kensington. Yay! It's the best <laughs> store. Oh, Nicole is okay. <laughs> Three. Maybe I got the name wrong. I didn't. No, no, no. I know who you're talking about. I just think Kang's, it, we're kind of far from her. 370. Here we go. Oh my goodness, I'm getting the last one. Whoop. 371. Some of these I can't even read the name. It's called Perilene Violet. Perilene Violet? Anyway, they're fancy, and I feel fancy. Okay, 371. 370. Oh, where's 372? Huh. It goes from 371. Someone asked if this is ink. Um, no, this is watercolor. Um, so it's normal watercolor stuff. Oh, okay, I was looking at the wrong number. It's 472. 472, I'm getting the last of that one. 474. 473. 476. Four. I'm already getting low battery, so. Okay. Give me the. I brought a battery pack for that reason. There we go. I travel with this battery pack all the time. Here you go, baby. Okay, guys, I'm just going to be all up in your face for a second. There we go. Okay. All right. 485. 485. 494. They so want we'll... you to look into Copic sponsorships for you. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> I heard that Copic doesn't sponsor anyone. 481. 481. So what are we in now? The blues? We're in the blues now, yeah. 475. Oh, that is pretty. I'm so glad I got this one. It's Helio Turquoise. Helio Turquoise. Super excited about that color. Okay, so that was 475. Now we're in 509. 528. Now we're going to start going into the greens soon. 528, 513, 514. Here's the stack as it grows. 530. 530, 526, 515, 229. So now we're going back up to some of the yellow. Are these colors you have already used? No. So I'm getting 229 and 230. So these are kind of in the yellows, but they're the two tones that I've chosen for skin, for like the base skin tone. And then I'm going to be going down into the browns in a bit to add in like the darker tones, but these are gonna be the light base skin tones. 229 and 230, okay. 660, Six. 660, okay, so we're out of that one. So I'll see if they um, can bring that in. It was raw sienna, all right. 667, there we go. 650. Is this solid watercolors? I've never yes. seen that before. Yeah, so these are little watercolor. They're called half pans. So the half pans are a little bit small like this. This is a full pan, right? Um, I want to get them already dried. You can buy the tubes, put them in these, and then let them dry on your own. I tend to like glob out too much from the tubes, which is why I'm choosing to do the pre-made pans. Um, and that's just a personal choice thing. Maybe in the next few years I'll change my mind and decide to get tubes. But um, 
whenever I have used the tubes, I squeeze out like toothpaste amounts and you really don't need that much. You, you just need a tiny little bit, especially because I'm working on comic book stuff, so the panels and the images are quite small. If you were, say, painting a really big flower and it was all, you know, varying tones of pink, yes, you would want to use the tubes. You can get a lot of paint and you can work with a lot of paint. In my case, I'm using tiny little brushes with a very small amount of paint on it, and so to me it's not worth it to get the tubes. I feel like I'll waste a lot. But you can get half pans, which are the ones I'm buying, or you can get full pans. Here we have the half pans, so that's what I'm going with. And Yolanda says, don't forget the watercolors I gave you. Yes, I have those too, Yolanda. Thank you. Okay, 671 I already got. I lost where I was at. Six fifty. I may have already gotten that one, so I'll have to check at the end to make sure I don't have duplicates. Six seventy one. Okay, so six sixty was the one we were out of. Six fifty. Six seventy one. Six seventy two. Six sixty eight. Six sixty eight. 665, 669. So I'm getting some of these darker sable browns, and I'm actually going to ink with the sable kind of dark browns at the end if I want to like make anything pop better or almost have a bit of an inked look to it. But without that hard black line, I'll use some of these darker colors. So that was 669, 662. Do you need a pen to cross them out? Probably, but I'll check it all at the end. 782, 780, 782, 781, and 791. 791, yay! This guy says he went and let his dogs out, comes back and you're still getting ink. <laughs> I wow. know, well look. <laughs> That's all the ones that I'm buying. So I think it was 32 colors, but I'll count and make sure that I've got that correct. So I've gotten all of those, and now I'm gonna start going into the brush cleaners. I wanna get a large mixing palette with a lid, which actually I believe is right on the other side of oh, the Oh, and aisle. then the ox skull. And the Don't ox forget. skull, that's right. What's this? It's masking fluid. Ooh, and it comes in like a Oh my goodness, next time I will get this. I already have a masking fluid right now. Okay, so we need ox gall. Well, that's the end of your list. Don't let me okay. get, get, get in your way. <laughs> now I already Keep have- Keep to the program. I already have um, whites from Schmincke at home. I have them in a tube because that I will use a lot. I'll use it for inking. I'll use it for a bunch of different like splatter effects on commissions. So I already have quite a bit of the white. I just need to find the ox skull, and I have no idea what that looks like or where it is. Okay, so what I'm looking for here is I want a palette that actually seals shut. So this has like a, a rubber, um, whatever that's called, gasket, I think, around the whole thing, and then it has an extra tray. So that when I'm when I'm working, because we all know that Sherlock loves to sit in my art stuff, and he just parks his butt wherever he pleases, the last thing I need is paw prints all over the house. So um, when I'm done mixing, I'm going to close it and seal it so that it's Sherlock proof. <laughs> so I'm trying to decide what um, size I need, but this is actually looking quite perfect. So I might get something just like this. So this is the Fusion Leak Proof Airtight Paint Palette. Yolanda says it will keep it moist. Is that good or bad? That's great, because then I can just keep working with it. So this is a Fusion Palette. Ooh, it looks like they have a purple one. Let me see if there are any purple ones. Not purple and pink. No. All right. This is another one, same basic concept. So it has 24 wells, which is probably a little more than I need. So I'm gonna stick with this one. 
This one has 33 wells. Again, more than I need. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with this guy. So that goes in. And let's see. So I need brush cleaner. Doesn't look like that's here. It's probably on one of the other aisles. And all right, ox skull must be something something that's here. I'd imagine. So I have one of these rubber cement thingies for picking up um, the masking fluid. So I have that already. I don't need another one. I have one of these gouaches, but just a small guy. Oh, so here's all the gouache. 20% <gasps> off all Hobi products. Ooh, ooh. We like sales. Are there any other questions that anybody has? I love carmine. We're gonna get a carmine and we're going to get a, a yellow, cadmium yellow. So I'm gonna get these in, are these gouache? Yes, so I'm getting these in gouache. And the reason why is because a lot of the, the panel changes and the panel borders are gonna be in these um, done with gouache so that it's got a little bit more intensity to it. It's not uh, as um, transparent as watercolor because I really want that to stand out. Or if I need to, I'll also just mix it with some acrylic. Why is this one 20 bucks? Oh, this one's, uh, this one's for Kara. If you're still watching Kara, while Don is meditating on the gouaches, I'll take you to the Bob Ross display. There you go. Soon, Andre, soon. What's happening? He says there should be a Dawn display. A Dawn display, yeah. <laughs> Aqua And class. someone was saying they just found you, and do you normally do watercolors? No, I am quite a novice when it comes to watercolor. I have done watercoloring one other time. Um, so the first time I ever watercolored was for Divinica issue four. So the, my very first watercolor attempt was actually a cover, but I did it on Facebook Live here and it was sort of a situation of like, guys, we're gonna see if this works. If it doesn't, we can tear it up and throw it away. You know, so no harm, no foul. Um, but watercolor, as opposed to Copic marker, which I use frequently, and you guys know that I use Copic marker all the time, is that watercolor I can cover a lot more space a lot quicker than I can with Copic marker. So watercolor really helps with the speed element of doing interior pages, which, you know, I need to fill a bunch of 11 by 17 pieces of art. And so for that reason, I'm going to go with watercolor from here on out. So that's why I'm kind of um, getting a setup that I need. But at the same time, I'm watching YouTube videos. I'm reading tutorials. I have no idea about any of all this stuff, but I have read that Schmincke is very good quality and has nice pigmentation, so that's what we're going with. And also because my art store has the Schmincke pans, and so I'm, I'm really grateful to the art store for having them here, and they actually worked out a thing that they are bringing these in specifically so that they can have the full set like this is just, it's incredible, you know, that whenever I run out of something, I can come back here and get the one that I need, whereas if I had to buy them online or something like that, I would have to wait three weeks for you know them to get back in which i don't have time to wait like that so this is fantastic and that's why i'm going with schmincke as well even though they're fancy <laughs> but i do have the schmincke palettes right here ah, oh well. okay um i'm gonna have to ask ask them where the ox gall is or if they have any kind of synthetic ox gall because the real stuff kind of freaks me out um so yeah, we'll figure that out later and we're gonna go look around for some other fun things because now it's brush time. So we need proper brushes. 
So this is all my stuff that I came with, and I actually brought all the brushes that I have, which is like five, um, to make sure that I don't buy duplicates of like the same thing. But I have a brand that I really like. And so these ones are my favorite. Um, see? They're the, the Princeton Velvet Touch ones. So I've used these ones before, I've already bought them, I know that they work for me. What all these brushes do, I have no clue. So um, I'm not the person to ask on that yet, but I do know that I need a few more. So I'm going to just gonna put this in here. I'm gonna take out the ones that I already own, which are these. Because I used this wide one, I used it with Copic ink to do a blank. I don't know if you guys remember, I, I did a Lady Death blank where I, I did red Copic ink or on the back of the whole thing. And no matter how many times I've washed it, I can't get the red Copic out. So I need a new one of these. If they even have it anymore. It doesn't look like they do. So I might have to put in a, put in a request for one to get ordered because I need another one of these. Um, and then I want like a kabuki brush, and I noticed this on Olivia de Berendis. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing her name incorrectly, but I was watching one of her, her videos where she was doing like a, I think she was watercoloring a Wonder Woman. I love Olivia's art like so much. And she had something that looked like a little kabuki brush, so kind of a brush that you use for makeup. Um, but she was using that brush, it's a big, round one for for saturating the paper and I thought that that was genius so I'm looking for something kind of like that maybe something like this would work so it's just to like get the paper wet but without making it like doused because that's what I tend to do is I just over douse the paper and then it's not not really useful to me but this looks fantastic so I'm gonna get this one Jimbo says the supplies are overwhelming. There is I a know, lot of trust. Right? Okay, so I have these brushes so you guys can see oh. them. These are the sizes that I have. This one I ruined. I'm just going to have to keep it for only using on red ink. Um, it looks like they're out of stock of this one, so I'll just put in a request and get it later. Um, these are the two main ones that I use. And then I have kind of like a medium small and then a really tiny one and this one I use a lot for inking but as you can see I traveled with it and it's bent. Joseph what was your question if you say that again? One. One round. Which one is the? Okay so this is one round. I'm gonna get a backup of this guy. It's tiny. Yeah and I want one even smaller. Actually you know what I can just use my Winsor & Newton for that. Okay and then I have a 12 and an 8. Maybe let's get a 10. I need something for clouds. So I might actually consult with the, the people here that know more than I do about what brush would be good for clouds. Because I need to do a lot of cloud formations in the sky and I have a feeling that I'm still approaching brush purchasing like an inker. Um, my background is brush line inking with Winsor & Newton brushes, right? So I'm always looking for a good so solid tip. I don't think that's right for <laughs> clouds. <laughs> oh my God, you're so perfect. Okay. <laughs> Adam says to use the Bob Ross script liner brush he sent you. Oh, true. But that's not for clouds, right? That's for like hair and things. I'm a little too tall to use this guy. Okay. And then something else I'm going to get is I do have my Caran d'Ache, um, luminous color pencils but i talked with a bunch of you guys on twitch a couple days ago about this pencil it's a the caran d'ache um supra color um aquarelle so that you if they have a little paintbrush on them oh, that means see. if they have a little paintbrush on them that means that it's um you can watercolor with it so these blend perfectly with copic mark it's having a hard time focusing on oh, it okay. it wants to look at you all right well anyway it has a little paintbrush on it Whenever a colored pencil has a paintbrush on it, that means it's, it can, when you mix it with water, it turns into watercolor, right? A lot of other colored pencils, 
they are wax based and so then you put water or copic marker over it and it just kind of pools on the top nothing really happens this stuff blends with copic marker like a dream um, so I'm thinking I might use some of this even for the skin tones if I need to do any parts where I just want more precision I may use some colored pencils um, from this super color line I don't know if they have it here but I'll check a couple questions. Someone's wondering where you stream your stuff, like your tutorials. Okay, my tutorials and, and all of those things are on Twitch. Um, and the reason why I switched to Twitch is because um, I'm able to have two cameras going at once. My phone, as you guys saw, it doesn't necessarily focus where you want it to. It was always focusing at the top of my pencil as opposed to the art that I was working on. So go to twitch.tv slash Don McTagg. Um, if you click on this this video, you'll be able to see how to spell my name. It's atrocious. I'm sorry. Okay. And the the Twitch streams are archived on YouTube, so. That's right. Okay. You can see them there. Brush cleaner. I've been using this exact same brush cleaner since I started using brush cleaner, so like 20 some years, and I love this one. Oh, and the other question: um, yeah. Would rubbing alcohol take the red out of your brush? I tried that. It's a good question. It's actually a really good theory, and technically it should work. I think that a lot of it is up in the metal part of the barrel, and that's why I can't get it all out. Okay, so I've got that. Now we're gonna go over here. Okay. So they don't have the one that I was using before, but this, I use it to dust away my eraser shavings. Now I get the one that only has three, so it's about half of this size. Um, and They're I'll check. On They're on order. Okay, thank you, Annette. They're on order. So my favorite. Look, this one is is twice the size, and it's only two ninety five. These things are the best. Now, technically, I think they're for um, like sumi painting, like kanji and stuff like that. I use it for cleaning my page. It's my favorite. I love these. So anyway, if you see these at an art store, get them. They, the, they are the best. Because when you get the big uh, duster eraser brushes at, at stores a lot, they're, they're wide, right? And what happens is that you're spreading graphite all over your art or whatever tool you happen to be using, color pencil, what have you. You're, you're spreading the entire image and you're smearing your image all the time, even if it's micro smears and you don't even notice it. Um, this is just in a what the little spot that you need it in and nowhere else so get thyself one of these okay so this i'm gonna get one of these to spritz my paper and spritz my watercolor it's just a little spritzing can and it's fantastic Adam says, look at the Bob Ross blender brush. It's wicked soft. Where is that? Okay, I need to look for it. Bob Ross blender brush. Is it one you have? Did he give it no. to you? Uh, no, he sent me like a fine line brush. Um, the Bob Ross stuff's at the end of this one on, okay. the, on the end. Okay. Is it this one? Is it like a fan brush? So Adam sent me this one, which thank you so much. I'm going to use it. All right, help us out here, Adam. Which one do you, did you mean? <laughs> he says it's round. It's round? Okay, well, I'll ask for some, some help. Annette, <laughs> I need to find oxgall, or if you have a synthetic one, I don't know what you guys use. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also looking for, um, would you, what would you recommend? I was looking for like a kabuki brush. Oh, perfect. See, and I had no idea where to find it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, so I'm looking for something to lightly put water on the watercolor paper. Is something would something like this work or what is this for that's 
for one of those. Often people use those for pastel for blending, but watercolorists to use that as well. Okay. Let me show you a couple of other options. And then I don't know what, what brush to use if I'm painting like clouds. So kind of like smoky. People, like this is called a quill. Okay. And people like the quills for that. So feel how soft that is. And you wouldn't believe how much water that holds. So it comes in different Okay, uh, so I'll need a little sizes. one because I'm drawing little. Okay. So like one so of those. even something that. like that. So you'll see it's got this weird plastic and wire that's holding it. That's kind of typical of a quill okay. brush. So different companies have them. Different, you know, Princeton brush. I know you like Princeton. I do. But these are good ones for laying down lots of lots of water. Okay. And also, you know, clouds where you're just wanting to have this puppies. soft. Absolutely. Ah. So works well for that. Quill brushes. And so then I just wash the sticky stuff off. Right, right. with the wash brush cleaner. Right, and you don't take that off. Okay. You take that <laughs> off, the hairs fall out. I've, okay. had, I've had someone do that. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, so I use this for adding little bits of water, soft water, right? You can do that as well, okay. absolutely. And then this one for the clouds. Yes. What are the fan brushes for? Blending. Blending, um, you can use it for that. Some people like it for doing um, grasses and stuff, but we have a better brush for grasses or fur, if you're doing fur. And instead of, say, taking a teeny tiny brush like this and doing one stroke, mm -hmm. one stroke, you would take something like this. This is called a, um, um, a grainer. I don't know if you can see ah, that, yeah. but what they've done is they've taken the hairs and they've just thinned it off the end. So when you make that wet, you can do one stroke, you can do like a whole bunch of fur, a <gasps> whole fascinating. bunch of feathers. So we have some that uh, are, are ended with a round, okay. looks more natural. I also have some that come to an end with um, a, a flat edge. Oh, interesting. Yes, and I have more, Princeton makes more in their select. Oh, uh, so there's, you have another Princeton brush area? Follow me. <laughs> this also looks very interesting. I just love that. It's so cool Again, looking. good Look texture. At this little one. Oh my god. It's like a little yeah. tiny peacock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going for more brushes, people. So okay, I'll follow you. Here. Thank you so much. Adam is recommending number two Windsor & Newton Series 240. <laughs> Number two, Windsor & Newton Series 240. Okay, gotcha, Adam. Here's the grainer brushes. So you can see when it's really, really wet. And if you give me a minute, I'm gonna go grab a, a sample paper oh, that we can actually try sweet. this so you can show. Oh my everybody. God. So look, at, if you guys can see, it's a little bit more dense down at the bottom and then it has, mm -hmm. it's almost like layered or something. And then, so with these ones, when it's wet, it creates a bunch of little tips right and so then you can do fur that's what Annette was saying is you can do fur with it or grass because it's like a million brushes in one I love that so we can try that here okay there's clean water okay dip that in there and then this is what's called brush stroke paper so you can actually try it just with water so check it out you and guys see what it does. oh my god that's amazing so you can just change the color or whatever you need mm -hmm. Or dip it in uh, multicolors. Oh my god, that's so cool! I will definitely be needing one of these. Oh so my that's god. the widest one. It starts with right. the quarter quarter inch and goes up. And again, rounded tip or flat? Tip? Rounded tip. Yeah, I can't decide. The rounded is nice because then you can kind of. Mm -hmm. I'm just used to round tips. It's cool though. You can also do things like that so that it almost has that dry sumi brush stroke look right. to it. I'm liking this. <laughs> okay, let's see. There's the rounded, I like these ones. They're so interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna start with one of these for sure. And then if I need a bigger one, I'll go up. So this is kind of the half size, I think. Maybe a third of the size. But you guys can see how the brush goes into these smaller tips. And these are the Princeton Select. So you can get them at Ken Kensington Art Supply and Wow, they've got such an amazing selection. I didn't even know to look there. Thank and this you. is what they call their mixed media brushes. They're, so for oh. a little bit of everything. Wow, so they're mixed media brushes as well. That's amazing. Okay. I'll put that one back. That, it's you. okay? Yep. All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right, and so this one is for blending then. This Again, little- do you want to try it? Well, I don't want to get all your brushes wet. It's just clean water. Okay. Oh, that's 
that's amazing. So you can do, I mean, this one even, you can have little fine lines if you yep. need it. Oh my god. But if you have two colors side by side and yeah. they're still wet, you, you can, can blend use that it. to just pull the two oh, colors fantastic. together and get a really nice soft blend I between love the two. soft blends. Oh my goodness. And look at the shape of this brush. <laughs> I love it so much. Okay, so I'm definitely getting that. Definitely gonna get this one too. So it's a little bit wider, or is it exactly? The same? It looks about the same. I, I have a guy here in Newfoundland now asking if, if they ship to if this store do ships ship? to we Newfoundland. Do. Absolutely, we do, and we have. Cool. Hey, yeah. you guys. So you gotta look around and see what you want to buy because this store is the best. And we do have a virtual tour online. If you Google us, you can go online to take a virtual tour. Literally, just walk through the store. Oh my gosh. I didn't know that. I'm going to have to look that up too. <laughs> Someone else says this lady time? knows her stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm getting Thank schooled. I love it. Okay, well I'm going to get the red one so that it matches with the red. Sure. Okay, and then I'm getting one of these. What is this brush called again? That's a quill. A quill. Okay, so I've got a quill. I've got some soft smooshy brush. Kind of like a mop. Yeah. A big one's a mop. <laughs> okay. Let's see what the basket's looking like. Oh, huh? yes. Okay, so this I came with. This is the palette, but as you guys can see, I'm getting all these. Actually, you know, I'm pretty much ready to check out, so mm -hmm. I'll go. The loot. I'll put everything no, on minutes, here. Luminous. Oh my gosh, I forgot. Okay. We need to go over to the colored pencil area first. I'm just going to pick this up. Okay, so I'm checking over here in the colored pencils. Four, their watercolor ones. So they have Whoa. the Pablo, the Luminous, maybe the Pablos are the ones? No, okay. So these ones are the permanent colors. I'm looking for their soft. Yeah, he says there's a U-Haul waiting outside. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Okay, so they don't have... I have luminance already. I was looking for the watercolor version of the Caran d'Ache. They don't have them here, but I'm sure if I need any select ones, they'll order them in and I can get them later. So I'll get those ones later. And what we're going to do now, um, I'm going to take some questions. So I'm just going to be browsing around for any questions anybody has. So I'm going to look and see if there's something I forgot. And then, um, and then I'll check out. We'll just do actually a little bit more of the store. So as Annette said, everybody, if you Google Kensington Art Supply, um, they have a virtual tour of the entire store and they do shipping. So if you need anything that you're seeing in this store, so they have all the mono zero erasers or the mono erasers, got all that. I used to use the magic rub for years until I switched to the mono. Um, I think that's a place in Thailand. So yeah, there's all the stuff that they have in the store. And again, just to remind everybody, this is not a sponsored video. I am here buying my art supplies just like everyone else. But the store was very kind enough to let you guys join me on my shopping spree. Don't forget the mixing palette, someone says. I got the mixing palette. Here, I'll show you. Thank you guys for the reminder. I decided to get this one, so I'll show you a picture on the back. It comes with 18 little pans and then it has an extra tray and this, the lid seals and it's airtight. So that's just what I wanted. Sometimes I'll have mixed the color and then I really want to keep it but I have to run and cook dinner or go pick up the kids or whatever. And number one, I don't want Sherlock stepping in it and then walking all over everything else. Number two, I, I want to be able to keep the colors and not have to go rinse out my pan or something like that. So this way I can keep it. I can't see that link that you posted, Joseph. I'm sorry. I... Oh, I guess so. What's up? If someone else can see the, the website that Joseph posted, you could confirm whether or not that's the website. I can't see it from, from this view. Well, at the very end, we can go and ask them to tell us their, um, their actual URL. So this is all pens. They've got the microns. They've got zebra pens. I don't even know if I know what these are. It looks like they're like a type of jelly roll. 
Okay, so they've got the little protector on the ball point, but it looks like from what people have drawn, they look like opaque jelly roll pens. Oh, shows up on lighter dark papers, pigmented ink, fade resistant, fancy. Okay, so I buy my, um, my sakura jelly rolls here. So these are the ones that I use if I'm doing any kind of white on the paper. I use the sakura jelly rolls. They are, they don't dry out like the uni balls in my opinion. So I always buy the sakura jelly rolls. The uni balls, in my experience, I've managed to use them once, put the lid on and I can't use them again. How do you decide the colors you picked over the other watercolors? Oh, because all the colors look the same? Well, or maybe that brand. I'm not totally sure what he means. Okay, well, I decided on the colors by talking with J.P. Roth, and we looked through the whole thing, and we know kind of what we were planning for the color scheme of the series, um, what Divinica, the character, is supposed to look like, and so then we went through the palette. Of course, we picked almost everything, so I had to cull it down because we had a lot of colors that were similar. Um, and the main thing I wanted is to make sure that I always had two of the same shade basically like a darker version of it and then a lighter version because the lighter one you can mix with more, more water or white to make it clear or lighter and then with the darker version I can you know put less water in it and it can work as a deep shadow for the same tones so that's kind of how I called my list down because you know buying the full complete set that they have is very expensive so I'm just you know doing what uh, I need. Are we almost in the portfolios aisle? I remember this. Yes. Is this where your big print book thing yes. is? So I get my print books here. I buy my portfolio cases here. This is you know the 11 by 17s are here. This one's 14 by 17 actually 11 by 17. So these are the ones that I always buy. And then of course they have storage boxes. Sweet, that's actually really cool. So they have art storage boxes in a bunch of different sizes. They, this store is just unbelievable. They have such a good selection. Alrighty, so we're gonna go over here and get the, um, the links so that you guys can follow them online. Yeah. So they actually do art classes as well, but here you go, kensingtonartsupply.com. So they have amazing art classes here, painting classes. They have their website. Whenever I call, there's always someone here to answer. They're extremely helpful and knowledgeable. I love this store. And again, this is not an ad. This is just a happy customer. <laughs> All right, guys, I love you. I'll catch you later. It's Thanksgiving here in Canada this weekend, so I won't be going live on Twitch, but if you enjoyed this video, you can follow me on Twitch, and that's where I'll be doing all the live streaming. Now it's time for me to buy my art stuff. See you later. Bye.